<clears throat> Good evening, this is Kirk, and this is Act 3 of A Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, I'm going to show you uh, some notes, uh, and I'm, I'm really not going to go over them uh, uh, in detail, but uh, you can view them uh, at your leisure. <coughs> uh, here we've got a summary of Act 3. And uh, the first, we're we're gonna see the uh, the acting troupe, and uh, it's uh, really funny at how uh, inept they are. Um, they're they're totally um, uh, unable to uh, perform a play. Um, they're they are they're not artistic at all and uh, uh, they have no idea uh, what they're doing. Um, they're going to make some really ridiculous changes to the play based on the notion that they believe that, uh, that the ladies uh, in the audience will get scared and that they, the actors, will end up uh, being executed because they have scared the audience members so they're they're gonna do some really make some really stupid changes. <coughs> then um, we've got the uh, the fairy, the mischievous fairy uh, Puck, who is uh, Robin in your script. And uh, uh, here uh, I'd like to note how um, uh, in the original uh, script uh, uh, Puck refers to. Uh, the, uh, the 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 young uh, people in love uh, as uh, hemp and homespuns, and uh, that's translated to country bumpkins, <coughs> which is like a way to say um, I, I guess a, a simple hillbilly. <coughs> I thought that translation was um, interesting. Um, uh, the uh, sorry, sorry, I, I, I made a mistake. It's when it's when Puck sees the the actors, um, he sees them as uh, country bumpkins, or or hemp and homespuns. Um, they're simple craftsmen, and they're unintelligent. <coughs> they're not good actors, <coughs> and uh, uh, Puck's gonna have a lot of fun with this. The uh, arrogant actor. Uh, bottom <coughs> um, when he's alone in the forest Puck's going to turn his head into the head of a donkey which is also known as an ass or a jackass and then when the donkey comes back uh, the actors are, are going to uh, get scared and they're going to run away and they're going to leave um, uh, bottom uh, the donkey the ass-headed donkey sorry the ass-headed bottom they're going to leave him behind and that's when uh, uh, Titiana wakes up she's going to see bottom and she's going to fall in love with uh, the 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 ass-headed bottom <coughs> that's when she uh, uh, s tells bottom that uh all of her little fairies are going to do uh, wonderful things for him. They're going to wait on him. They're going to serve him. <coughs> Let me see if I can change this slide. <coughs> uh, and, uh, well, that's uh, the first scene in uh, Act 3. <coughs> we go on to uh, scenes uh, uh, 2 and 3. And uh, actually, I, I think I'll uh, pause here. Here's scene one. <coughs> uh, we've got uh, uh, the actors, uh, and um, uh, uh, Bottom's worried about uh, uh, the fact that they're going to use a sword. <coughs> Pyramus has to take out a sword and kill himself, which the ladies in the audience won't be able to stand. What should we do about that? 
by God, that's a real problem, it's true. <coughs> uh, write me a prologue that I can recite to the audience before the play starts. I'll tell them that we won't hurt anyone with our swords. So this is pretty ridiculous that uh, their idea is that uh, they're going to uh, basically warn the audience that uh, the swords really aren't swords. And then Snout says, uh, Won't the ladies be scared of the lion? <laughs> and uh, Bottom's got another brilliant idea that uh, that the lion should announce to the ladies uh, th in a very, in an awkwardly polite way, uh, Ladies, uh, you, you must say something like, Ladies, or lovely ladies, or uh, I would like to ask you, or I would like to request of you, or uh, I would like to beg you uh, not to be afraid and not to tremble with fear. But no, I am not at all a lion. I am a man, just like any other man. Uh, and then just tell them that uh, you're, sn you're snug the carpenter. Or, uh, in other words, break out of character and tell them who you really are. Which no actor would do, right? So, uh, uh, they, they go on... Uh, thinking up uh, uh, other really silly ideas about how they're going to represent the moon, uh, <coughs> and, uh, and and apparently there's a, a a part in their story where uh, Pyramus and Thisbe have to talk through a hole in the wall, <coughs> so they elect one of the guys to be the wall, or they they're going to elect somebody to be the the wall. Um, uh, Bottom says, he can hold his fingers in a V-shape, like this, and Pyramus and Thisbe can whisper to each other through that little crack. So, some really serious, si silly ideas, and that's when uh, Robin, uh, which is Puck, uh, comes in, and um, he... Uh, makes the reference to the the what was it the homespun uh hampkins or something like that uh <coughs> who are these country bumpkins swaggering around so close to where the fairy queen is sleeping <coughs> uh so uh remember uh Titiana is sleeping nearby and she's had a, a spell cast upon her She's had the love juice of the flower uh, uh, dropped into her eyes. <coughs> and uh, this is when Bottom uh, uh, exits uh, the and goes into the woods. Wait here. I'll be right back. <coughs> and uh, Robin says, that's the strangest pyramid I've ever seen. Uh, a reference to the fact that Bottom is a really... A strange, bizarre actor, <coughs> and, and so uh, uh, Puck follows uh, Bottom out into the woods, and uh, we go back to the actors, <coughs> and that's when um, uh, Puck enters. Of, of course, you know they don't see the fairy, but uh, 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 there's Bottom now with the head of a donkey, or in other words, the head. Uh, of an ass instead of a human head uh, and uh, so his head has been transformed into a donkey's head <coughs> and at first they they, they don't uh, or bottom has a line if I were handsome my lovely Thisbe I would still want only you so that's going to be really funny there because the, you know his line is if, if I were handsome right so no he has a donkey's head <coughs> Help, it's a monster! We're being haunted! Run, everyone, run! <coughs> so, uh, uh, the actors uh, run off the stage, and uh, uh, Puck uh, is having a lot of fun with this, and he talks about all of the different animals that he could change into, and he's going to follow them around in circles, and Bottom doesn't know why people are afraid of him, uh, why are they running away? Uh, and Snout comes back. Uh, I'm not sure why, but... Oh, Bottom, you've changed. 
What have you got on your head? And this, I suppose he thinks maybe it's a mask. <clears throat> and Bottom doesn't know. Uh, what do you think I've got on my head? You're acting like an ass, don't you think? So Bottom makes uh, several references to, uh, do you think I'm an ass? You know, you're acting like an ass. Uh, 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 which are all designed to be really funny to the audience because he doesn't know that he has the head of a ha the head of an ass. Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, the writer Quince comes in and, and makes a comment that you've been changed and reborn, and then he exits again, and. Uh, and Bottom thinks that they're playing a joke on him. They want to make an ass of me. They want to scare me if they can. Uh, but I won't leave this spot no matter what they do. And this is convenient because because Bottom is going to stay and Titiana is going to wake up. Uh, and she falls in love with the ass-headed Bottom. What angel is this who's waking me up? from my bed of flowers uh, and bottom's got a little song uh, and uh, Titiana is just um, uh, overflowing with uh, uh, her love for for bottom please sing again sweet human I know this is the first time I've seen you but you're so wonderful that I can't help swearing to you that I love you. <clears throat> uh, and uh, uh, Bottom makes a comment which is um, uh, a reference to one of the themes uh, that basically that uh, uh, mm, uh, love and reason uh, uh, have no relationship, that, uh, you know, lo that uh, uh, love I is really uh, chaos. But to tell you the truth, reason and love have very little to do with each other these days. <coughs> Tatiana, Tatiana, you're as wise as you are beautiful. <coughs> and uh, Bottom says, no, 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 that's not true. And Tatiana says, oh, you're going to stay here because she's got, you know, she's got magical powers. I rule over the summer, and I love you, so come with me. I'll give you fairies as servants, and they'll bring you jewels from the depths of the ocean. She's got these pretty ideas here, very fairy-like ideas, magical ideas. <coughs> and now she calls in her little fairy helpers, uh, and uh Titiana orders them to to serve uh, Bottom. Be kind and polite to, to this gentleman. And I love this line here where, uh, among other things that she asks the fairies to do for uh, Bottom, uh, she asks them, pluck off colorful butterfly, butterfly wings and use them to fan moonbeams away from his eyes as he sleeps which is uh, uh it's a heck of an image there uh, very very nicely done um by by shakespeare and uh so uh, uh there's some interplay between uh bottom and the fairies it's uh, more or less inconsequential uh and um uh, that's the end of that scene, and uh, we go to scene two, where the fairy king Oberon uh, enters. <coughs> so here's part of a summary. We have um, <coughs> uh, Oberon and uh, Puck are going to talk about what's happening with the. Uh, the love potion, and Oberon's really happy about wh what's going on. Um, Hermia uh, has uh, lost Lysander in the forest, and uh, now she's uh, 
uh, walking through the forest with Demetrius, uh, who of course uh, 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 has always been in love with her, and um, Puck realizes uh, that uh, 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 this is not the man that he enchanted, <coughs> and um, uh, they realize that uh, they've gotten uh, uh, confused about uh, uh, who they're casting spells on, uh, and uh, uh, Hermia thinks that Demetrius has killed Lysander, and she gets really angry with him. And uh, eventually she leaves, and uh, Lysander is going to lie down and fall asleep. Well, you know what happens when people fall asleep. Mm -hmm. um, Puck is uh, going to uh, squeeze the flower juice into Demetrius's eyes, and uh, 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 Puck goes to find uh, Helena. And uh, when he comes back, um, Helena I is with uh, Lysander because, uh, of course, uh, Lysander had the, the first spell cast upon him. And Lysander is following Helena through uh, the forest. And now Lysander uh, uh, is in love with Helena. Uh, he's supposed to be in love with uh with Hermia, but now he's in love with Elena, and he's following her all through the forest. But uh, the 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 really funny thing here is that um, Helena believes that Lysander is just being cruel, that Lysander is just playing a joke on her, and then uh, later um, uh, d when Demetrius um, is wakes up. Uh, he's going to see Helena, he's got the spell cast upon him, and so Demetrius is also going to fall in love with Helena. So the, the girl who originally uh, uh, didn't have um, her, um, her Demetrius uh, 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 now uh, is loved by uh, Lysander, and Demetrius, and she thinks it's all a cruel joke. So, uh, Hermia is going to uh, re-enter the scene, and uh, she cannot believe that uh, uh, the, the, that uh, Lysander has fallen out of love with her. And Helena cannot believe that the two men are in love with her, and she thinks it's all a big joke. And she also believes that Hermia is involved in that joke. <coughs> so uh, Lysander and Demetrius are, are both in love with uh, Helena. And they're ready to fight each other. They want to have a duel. Uh, and uh, Hermia is going to hold Lysander back. And there's a... Uh, a, a round of uh, references to uh, um, uh, Hermia's uh, height. Uh, she thinks that uh, Helena must have uh, played some trick uh, upon her uh, to steal Lysander away from her. That she has attracted, she has lured Lysander, she has attracted Lysander uh, by her height or by some other trick. Uh, and uh, uh, the two girls uh, very come very close to to fighting, and um, uh, this is considered the 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 climax of the play. There's no true climax, but but the action is at a high point uh, here in this scene, uh, and uh, the 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 two men go into the woods. And it's supposed that they're going to have a duel. And uh, Helena and Hermia uh, separate. And uh, uh, Puck has uh, uh, new plans. And uh, he's uh, going to uh, uh, imitate the voices of Lysander and Demetrius. 
uh, to confuse them uh, and uh, eventually uh, they become lost and uh, uh, both of those men are going to get tired and go to sleep again. So this is uh, scene two of Act Three, and uh, this is where uh, Oberon and uh, uh, Puck uh, are discussing uh, the uh, the chaos that they have created. Um, uh, um, Robin uh, or or Sar yeah, uh, Puck says that. Uh, um, My mistress Tatiana, Tatiana is in love with a monster. Uh -huh. uh, the stupidest one, uh, he's referring to uh, uh, Bottom. The stupidest one who played Pyramus in the play finished his scene and went to sit in the bushes to wait for his next cue. I took that opportunity to stick a donkey's head on him. This is when uh, Puck uh, explains what happened. Uh, Titiana woke up and immediately fell in love with him and as uh, and Oberon thinks it's all funny this is going even better than I planned uh -huh. and uh, so they basically uh, review everything that has happened mm -hmm. this is when uh, Hermia and Demetrius enter and Hermia is uh, looking for Lysander, and she thinks that maybe Demetrius has killed Lysander. <coughs> I'm only scolding you now. I'm only scolding you now. I'm only scolding you now. But I should treat you much worse, because I'm afraid you've given me good reason to curse you. If you killed Lysander while he was sleeping, where is he? <coughs> So, of course, Demetrius denies having killed Lysander. That didn't happen. Hermia gets angrier and angrier. And uh, she eventually tells uh, Demetrius, uh, Jill, you'll never see me again, whether or not he's dead. And she leaves. <clears throat> and that's when Demetrius uh, uh, goes to sleep. Mm -mm. And uh, uh, Oberon sends uh, Puck to go find uh, Helena. Oberon's going to put the, the flower juice on Demetrius' eyelids. We know what's going to happen. Helena's going to come back and Demetrius is going to wake up and fall in love with her. <coughs> uh, and Puck says, Helena is nearby, boss. The young man who I mistook for this one is here too, begging her to love him. Should we watch this ridiculous scene? Lord, what fools these mortals are. That's one of our famous quotes. Uh, so uh, Helena and Lysander are going to come back. Mm -hmm. uh, the Lysander and Helena. Uh -uh. And uh, Lysander is professing his love. Why do you think I'm making fun of you when I tell you I love you? Remember that Helena believes that uh, the men are being cruel to her. <coughs> you get trickier and trickier. <coughs> uh, and then Demetrius wakes up and falls in love with Helena. Oh, Helena, you goddess, you divine and perfect nymph. Oh, your lips are as ripe as a pair of tempting cherries touching each other. Pretty nice language there. <coughs> and then Helena claims that uh, 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 both of the men are uh, uh, being cruel to her. Do you have to get together to humiliate me too? If you were real men... As you pretend to be, you wouldn't treat a lady this way, making vows and promises and praising my beauty when I know you're really both disgusted by me. 
<laughs> and that's when Hermia shows up. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, it's hard to see clearly in the dark of night, but it's easier to hear. Well, I couldn't see you, Lysander, but I heard your voice, and that's how I found you. Why did you leave me alone so unkindly? Of course, she believes that Lysander is still in love with her, and Lysander professes his love to Elena. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I had to hurry to my love. Beautiful Helena, who lights up the sky better than all those fiery stars. Why are you looking for me? Didn't you figure out that I left you because I hate you? You can't mean what you're saying. It's impossible. And Helena thinks that they're all in on it. Uh, they're, they're all in on the joke of being cruel to her, making fun of her. Now I see that all three of them have gotten together to play this cruel trick on me. So they go back and forth about uh, 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 whether it's a game and whether it's a trick. Uh, and uh, Lysander and Demetrius are uh, going to start to argue very uh, heavily about who loves Elena more. <coughs> Uh, I say that I love you more than he does to Helena. If that's what you say, go fight a duel with me and prove it. You're on. Let's do it. So they agree to fight. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hermia, Hermia doesn't know what's happening. Uh, Lysander, where are you going with all this? Uh, and he calls her an African. Uh, get away, you African. I'm not sure why that's such I guess it's an insult uh -huh. and uh, so uh, uh, Lysander is telling Hermia to uh, to to stop hanging on me stop stop hanging on me you cat you thorn let go of me or I'll shake you off like a snake uh -huh. uh, which is a, a pretty uh, famous line Lysander to Hermia and uh, uh, apparently Hermia is a little bit dark-skinned. Uh, uh, get out, you dark-skinned gypsy. Get out, you horrible poison. Get out. Are you joking? Uh, and Helena thinks it's all a joke. Of course he is, and so are you. Uh, Lysander wants to fight Demetrius. Mm -hmm. And now... Um, Hermia and Helena are getting uh, uh, more or angrier with each other. Uh, uh, Hermia believes that Helena has uh, tricked uh, Lysander. Oh no, you trickster, you snake, you thief. What did you sneak in at night? What? Did you sneak in at night and steal my love's heart from him? Oh, that's very nice. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You're going to make me mad enough to answer you. Damn you, you faker. You puppet. So the girls are getting angry at each other. And uh, uh, Helena thinks that... Uh, uh, or Hermia thinks that she's uh, being uh, ridiculed uh, because of her short height. Mm-hmm. So it g goes on for a while like that, <coughs> and uh, uh, Helena and Hermia uh, both exit the scene, and we're back to uh, uh, Oberon the, the, the Fairy King and uh, Robin, who is uh, Puck, a and so they're uh, uh, trying to sort out what happened. Um, Puck says, Believe me, King of Illusions, I made a mistake. Didn't you tell me that I'd be able to recognize the man by the Athenian clothes he was wearing? So far, I've done exactly what I was supposed to do. I put the love potion on an Athenian's eyes. And so far, I'm pleased with the way things have turned out, since I find all this commotion very entertaining. And so... um. Uh, Oberon thinks that uh, 
they need to do a, a little bit. Uh, uh, they need to reverse the spells now. Uh, that that it's too much of a mess. They're gonna fix the mess that they made, and Oberon gives a, a new flower to to uh, Puck, and this is the antidote for the the love spell. It's going to erase all the damage that's been done to them. <coughs> So that's the plan. Uh, and uh, this is when, uh, okay, so Robin catches up with uh, Lysander <coughs> and Demetrius in the forest. And Robin starts to imitate their voices so that they will get lost. <coughs> so eventually they're going to get lost and they're going to get tired. And so Lysander says, uh, um, I'll rest here. I hope the pleasant daytime comes soon. As soon as the gray light of early morning appears, I'll find Demetrius and get my revenge for this insult. Uh, so uh, 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 Lysander's going to sleep, and uh, Robin or uh, Puck continues to... Uh, uh, to uh, uh, taunt uh, or b or bother uh, Demetrius uh, by imitating Lysander's voice. Ha ha ha! Hey, you coward! Why aren't you coming? Uh, so um, Demetrius is going to get tired too. I'm exhausted. I need to lie down and sleep on this cold ground. But watch out. I'll find you at dawn. Uh -uh. So, uh, then, uh, uh, Helena also, uh, lies down and goes to sleep. Uh, uh, uh what we're going to have is we're going to have all four of them asleep here. Uh, Hermia enters and she goes down to sleep. Uh, and here's Puck. Sleep well there on the ground. I'll cure you gentle lover by putting this medicine on your eyes <coughs> and uh, when you wake up you'll be truly delighted to see the woman you once loved <coughs> and he makes a reference to the old nursery rhyme Jack and Jill <coughs> and that's the end of act three And I'll, I'll go ahead and show you uh, some of these uh, summary notes if you'd like to uh, read that and uh, help supplement your understanding of uh, uh, what has happened. Uh -huh. This is a, this describes a scene that we just uh, saw the end of Act Three. And we've got an analysis here of Act 3 as well uh, that you can take some time to, uh, to read and appreciate. Feel free to stop the video. And that was the end of that. Have a nice evening.